Thirty years after the apocalypse, a book is discovered. It tells the people of old gods, the strongest, the smartest, the tallest, places of splendor and objects renowned for rarity. They immediately created a religion following the gods shown by the Guinness Book of World Records. What is wrong, my child? Silence. You know the word spoken at confession will never leave this room. It... it hurts, high priest. What hurts? This doubt. What do you doubt, child? I doubt everything. It is as if all the truths I once believed in were merely a house of cards, and now a breeze has come and blown the house down. And what is this breeze? The gods. I once saw only strength, bravery, boldness without any fear. Now I only see the strain in their muscles, the doubt in their eyes. My child, are you suggesting? A trial, the boy said quietly. My child, you must know what this means. The consequences. I am ready to accept them, father. So for weeks the boy practiced. Out in the ponds in the Forbidden Valley he snuck out to in the mornings before lessons. Every time he entered the water he would curse himself, almost hoping that it would not be true. But then in the water he found peace. Found the only peace, perhaps, that he had ever known. It was as if he could perfectly feel the air in his lungs, the oxygen coursing through him, clean and vital, and hear all the quiet machinery of his body, his heartbeat, his veins, the sway of his limbs. And then, eventually, the oxygen would be gone, and he would resurface. And he would close his eyes before looking at the numbers, only to see and know with growing conviction that all he had been told before was a lie. The last person he looked to was his mother. She smiled bravely while his father could not even look at him, but the boy could see the fear, the sadness in her eyes. He would enter the water and then come out as an exile, an outcast, or something else entirely. And then it was time. He squeezed her hand, trying to let her know he was still her son. As he was lowered into the water, he saw her turn away, her hands over her eyes. The water, quiet and peace from all the chatter and murmurs above him. He tried to still his nerves, his wildly beating heart, the tremors and tingles that kept flaring up in his fingers. He tried to count, but somewhere along the way he was going too fast or too slow, and he gave up. But still, he held on, determined to... He didn't know what drove him so, but he closed his eyes and stood still in the water tank until his lungs felt like bursting, felt like fire and pain, and... He rose, and the crowd was silent. As he climbed out of the water onto the platform, he knew something was wrong. And then they all knelt, one by one. His mother first, then the elders, then everyone. His father, his childhood friends, eventually the high priest. Oh, great Guinness, thank you for gracing us with the presence of a new god, the champion of holding air. He heard the people he had known all his life, loved and hated and envied and walked past without a second thought, pray to him, lauding his greatness, his elevation above their existence, and a new belief came to him. The lie beneath the truth, the fact that the gods were nothing but mortal humans like everyone, and that his life would never be the same.